and some battling writing somewhere else. So uh, I reached out to the, the author and he gave us permission to tell it. So and we call it The Witch of Dismal Falls. <clears throat> in the summer of 2015, Chuck decided to hike to a spot in Transylvania County called Dismal Falls. Despite the ominous name, Transylvania County is known as the land of waterfalls. It's running wild with creeks and tributaries. Chuck says, it's very beautiful, I've always, I've, but I've always felt a mysterious sense of curiosity while visiting in the area. A man by the name of Jim Bob Tinsley wrote a book called Land of Waterfalls about Southwest North Carolina and described the Dismal Falls as, quote, the most foreboding place in the Southern Appalachians. Chuck admits that he only learned of this after his visit. And he had known, had he known of Tinsley's apprehensions, he may not have ever made the trip at all. The hike itself is ridiculously demanding. Grades of over 50% make up the majority of the hike, and that's not an exaggeration. There are four waterfalls on the way up to the creek. The first two were small, safe, but with something channeling for them. About the time he hit the third fall, it's called the grotto. He recalled the feeling of dread being very common, but also the sense of beckoning, drawing him closer. Chuck got to a split in the path, and his map was in hell. He could hear the falls down the side of the mountain, but he needed, but he felt he needed to go up. He left something behind to help find the way back and headed up the rugged jungle of earth that was the bridge line. He had just started the intense scramble down when he got the sense he was being watched. He turned to look behind him and thought he saw someone disappear into the rod of entrance surrounding the trail. He only saw the back of what appeared to be a cloak. There was no sound. It didn't make any sense. The leaf litter gives away even the smallest insects. I should have heard something, he thought. Chuck attributed this to a combination of his own dehydration and sheer exhaustion. He thought perhaps he was hallucinating, but then he couldn't shake that feeling of dread. He continued to climb, step after growing step. And after cresting over the ridge, he was finally in the dismal hollow. He found himself looking down at nearly 70 degree angle with a rope anchor to the tree. He repelled himself down to the second rope and finally to the bottom. Then he came a wet rock scramble to the base of the falls. The falls were breathtaking. A 200 foot gentle cascade with a 40 foot sheer drop to the very bottom. Incredible, he thought. Chuck sat down to chew on some mountain men, and when he clenched up at the top of the falls, he nearly fell off the log and into the creek. There was a woman. She was pretty far away, but appeared to be only wearing a cloak of some sort. Gray, tightly curled hair. That's all he could see from his vantage. She was facing him for a few seconds before it turned and falling into the field. <clears throat> he immediately got up and started scrambling up the mossy soaked rock cascade toward the top of the falls. He got there after a very treacherous climb, only to find him. With hands on knees and taking labor breaths, he heard a voice from the bottom of the falls. It said in a strange, spectral voice. It sounded hollow. He turned to look, and there she was, disappearing into the rock ginger once again. He was in total and absolute disbelief. He felt sick to his stomach. Chuck carefully picked his way down to the base again and started the trail out. He just felt he shouldn't be there. Like he'd seen something he shouldn't. Now Chuck's a long time bushman and he ain't afraid of much. But at this point, Chuck was ready to run out of that hard cry. He finally made it to the top using the ropes for help. As soon as he crested the ridge, his nose started bleeding. Only a few drops, but kept moving running along the mountainside. He got to the bottom and followed the path indicated by the hike he left behind. He kept running and running and came around the blind curve. That's when 
he nearly ran into her at full speed. And trying to stop, he took a hard tumble, and when he opened his eyes, she was standing over him. She looked very Scottish, he recalled, with curly hair and fair skin. She didn't look particularly gruesome or haggard. She was very old, but it was obvious that her, in her youth, she had been very beautiful. Her eyes, though, her eyes were very wide and full of vitality, very youthful. And the irises were so white and blue that they were almost white. Though her form appeared benign, he had the distinct feeling that she did not mean him well, and that she did not want him there. He wanted to crawl away, but found he was backed up against the rock. He edged along it until he regained his feet, then backed away from her. Her expressionless gaze never left him. He ran until he was well off the mountain. When he stopped moving, he was on a more well-established trail. He finally felt fine again, but the dreadful gloom lingered. All was silence, he hiked down. Not a single animal sound. He was almost out. Then suddenly, a bobcat appeared on the trail at ahead of him, seemingly from nowhere. He stopped and looked at it. The bobcat looked at him. It had her eyes. He knew those were her eyes. He told her, Look, you've got a beautiful mountain here. I will never go back to your waterfall. Please let me go. Just let me go. He watched as the bobcat slowly turned away and disappeared into the thicket. In recalling his encounter with the witch, Chuck told the bobcat, spooked. I think she was kind of like letting me know that she was there. She's making her presence known more than anything else. And yeah, really, that's what I got from her for the most part, because like I said, she could have done whatever she wanted with me when I was laying up against that rock wall. It sounds crazy, but I think she stopped me on the trail to judge my character. She decided for whatever reason not to harm me and just see if I was worthy enough to be in her woods. And I think she determined that I must have been. The story was retold with Kyle Mishnah Walker. Thanks, John.